Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of Teresio Auctions and we've got some very exciting news for you. Those of you that are uh, signed up to the newsletter of Teresio will know that they've just announced today that they shall be selling a violin by Antonio Stradivari, the Empress Caterina, which was made in Cremona in 1708 in their New York auction on June the 8th, 2023. This is a golden period Strad. So this is a very, very fine level of Stradivari violin. So what I'm gonna to do today in this video is I'm just gonna give a bit of a read through, a bit like an audio book, just very raw, completely unscripted, unplanned. I'm gonna read through uh, this interesting article that Jason Price has provided here in the Teresio uh, Cartegio give a bit of information there if I've got anything to add I will add it if I don't I won't then we'll also just have a look on the Teresio Cozio archive and just look at the listing for the actual instrument look at some of the provenance and all of that kind of stuff just a really quick overview of this really exciting instrument so before we get onto it I'd just like to say um, if you do enjoy these videos please consider subscribing like or comment because it really does help the channel and I would appreciate it greatly so yes let's uh, read through this so Antonio Stradivari the Empress Caterina of 1708 the Empress Caterina a golden period Stradivari will be sold by Teresio in New York on June the 8th 2023 complete in all parts in good condition and with important provenance reaching back near 300 years impressive the Empress Caterina is a highly attractive golden period Stradivari Using the resources of the Cozio archives, specifically the archives and business records of W.E. Hills and Sons, Rembert Wurlitzer, Caressa and Francais, and William Moaning and Son, we have documented the provenance of this important violin, which comes for sale on June the 8th. So, very interesting so far. We've got a few pictures here. It's a nice picture of the back there. You can see kind of fine quality of woods used here, beautiful kind of edge work and corner work. Very nice indeed. We missed actually a image of the front. Once again, very beautiful F holes there, lovely edge work and lovely purfling. We'll see more pictures a bit later. Here's a bit of an overview. You can see parts of the scroll, general outline and varnish. Some side views here. Like I said, once again, we'll look at this in more detail. Some views of the scroll, really beautiful scroll there and a view of the front as well very nice so here is a certificate of authenticity jason price so this is the pro forma so if you are to buy it then you will receive this document from teresio to say that they kind of in their opinion it is a stradivari Let's see what else we've got here rembert wurlitzer so this seems to be uh, an older certificate here uh, regarding this instrument Let's see what else we got here lots of documents here is a another certificate here where is this coming from i think this is the william uh moaning i believe i think that is that certificate let me just double check i believe it is and that's from philadelphia and let's see what this certificate is the next one Silvestra and Mocatel Caressa and Francais here and what's the last one here Silvestra and Mocatel so there you go that's an interesting collection of certificates there so then reading on from this point uh, the history of the Empress Caterina Stradivari was first recorded in 1898 in the business records of W.E. Hill & Sons. In April of that year, Alfred Hill visited Russia with Baron Johann Knupf, who had extensive business dealings in Russia and was one of the Hill's best customers. In St. Petersburg and Moscow, Alfred catalogued the collections of Prince Yusupov and brought back intelligence concerning the existence of 16 more instruments by Stradivari that were unknown to us before. Among these instruments were the 1708 Emperor Katerina, which Alfred bought for the firm. So here is Empress Catherine the Great in 1763 by Fyodor Rokotov in the 
Tretyakov Gallery, Moscow. Well, definitely, that was a bit difficult to say. Um, so, according to Alfred Hill, in the mid-18th century, the Russian ambassador to Venice procured this instrument for the Empress Elizabeth Petrovna, who reigned over the Russian Empire from 1741 to 1762. When Elizabeth died, the violin passed to her successor, Catherine the Great, under whose rule the arts prospered and Western Enlightenment ideals flourished. One of Catherine's secretaries of state was Adrian Moisevich Grabowski, an ambitious colonel and court advisor who was a lover of music, an amateur violinist and had his own surf orchestra. The Stradivari passed to Grabowski and then to his son-in-law, Vasily Yakovlich Guberti. The Russian ambassador to Venice procured this instrument from the Empress Elizabeth Petrovna, who reigned over the Russian Empire from 1741 to 1762. Just reaffirming that, there's Adrian uh, Mosevich Grabovsky in 1795, Nikolai Arganov in the Tretyakov Gallery, Moscow. Uh, so Alfred Hill uh, brought the Empress Katerina back to London in 1898, and a year later the Hill firm sold the violin to Mrs. Marie Douglas Stothert, a French violinist who had studied in Brussels and married a wealthy English engineer, Arthur Kendall Stothert. The Hills noted that Mrs. Stothert was a fairly brilliant player. A portrait of Mrs. Stothert with her violin painted by Hubert von Herkomer is in the collection of the Royal Holloway, University of London. So there is uh, Marie Douglas Stothert in circa 1894, Hubert von Herkimer in the Royal Holloway University of London. Twelve years later, Mrs. Uh, Stohert traded the 1708 back to Hills and purchased the 1714 Dolphin Stradivari, later the concert instrument of Yasser Heifetz. Two months later, the Hills sold the 1708 to Henri Belleville, professional violinist from Bois Colombes near Paris. The Hills referenced the violin in their 1902 monograph on Stradivari, but the date of the instrument was mistakenly recorded as 1706. So, and just another reiteration there that 12 years later, Mrs. Stother traded the 1708 back to Hills and purchased the 1714 Dolphin Stradivari, later the concert instrument of Yasser Heifetz. In 1917, the violin was in possession of a French businessman, Prosper Morel, the owner of the Malt Knife Company. Four years later, it was sold by Caressa and Francaise to the violinist Leo Gutter of Venice. While in Gutter's possession, it was exhibited at the 1937 Stradivari Bicentennial Exhibition in Cremona and illustrated in the book that followed. After Gutter's death in 1945, the violin passed his daughter, Peggy Gutter Finzi. By 1951, the Stradivari had arrived in New York and was certified by Rembert Wurlitzer. A year later, it was sold by William Moaning & Son to Dr. J uh, Jacob Gershon Cohen. So we saw those certificates earlier, Rembert Wurlitzer and the Moaning one. A prominent Philadelphia radiologist who pioneered techniques in mammography. In 1971, the Empress Katerina was bought by the American collector Herbert Axelrod, and in 1982 it was acquired by the German-Italian industrial entrepreneur Giorgio Fage. The instrument is being sold by Fage's heirs. The Empress Katerina is sold with certificates from Theresia, Rembert Wurlitzer, William Moaning & Son, Sylvester and Mocatel, and Caressa and Francais. A dendrochronology examination dated the latest annual rings for the treble and bass sides of the top to 1700 and 1702 respectively. Significant, significant cross matches were found with the 1713 Rothschild Cooks, the 1719 Rapaldi, the 1718 uh, Zeckley, the 1715 Allard, the 1714 Ex Joachim, the 1712 Hrimali, the 1716 Baron Wittgenstein, and others. So, quite a lot of matches there, and there's some notes here at the uh, bottom. Uh, definitely worth. Uh, subscribing to the Ecosio archive I'll just say that now as we're kind of uh, getting the information from here uh, then so basically that's the uh, Jason Price uh, overview of this uh, particular violin uh, narrated by myself in a bit of a dodgy manner 
Uh, and here is the official Kozio archive uh, listing for this instrument, so we can read through this. So, Antonio Stradivari, Cremona 1708, the Empress Caterina, bearing its original label, Antonio Stradivarius Cremonensis, Fasciabat, Anno 1708, back in one piece of quarter cut maple with medium width flame descending from the treble bouts. Top in two pieces of spruce with narrow wide uh, narrow width grain broadening towards the edges, ribs and head of similar wood. Varnish of a reddish golden orange brown colour, length of back 35.5, upper bouts 16.7, middle bouts 10.75, lower bouts 20.7. Uh, there are 39 additional images in the archive which are not available publicly, so it's a reason to join the archive and then request to... Uh, look at the other pictures so let's have a look at this in a bit more detail so we've seen some pictures already it's the front and the back beautiful looking golden period instrument very nice scroll there you can see the neck graft there and some of the peg bushing that's been there before here on the side as well you can see the neck graft there and other additional peg bushings nice view of the side very nice uh, color there there's the front view, a bit of the back, a bit of a close up of the F holes, nice positioning there, really nice back and varnish, view of the label, a bit more. So very interesting to see that. Let's have a look at the um, the provenance then. So uh, Xarina Elizabeth Petrovna, Empress Katerina of Russia, Adrian Moisevich Grabowski, Ernest Andre Salzar, Count Dua, M. M. Zoanov, Viktor uh, Mikhailovich Frelov, Nicholas Friedrich Kracht, uh, sold by W. E. Hills and Sons there in 1889-1898 for Nicholas Friedrich Kracht, 1889-1910, Mrs. Arthur Kendall Stothert in 1910 sold by W. E. Hill and Sons, from 1910, Henri Belleville in 1917, sold by Sylvester and Mocatel. In 1917, Julio de Gartua. From 1917, Prosper Morel. In 1921, sold by Caressa and Fonsais. 1921 to 1945, Professor Leo Guetta. 1945 to 1951, Peggy Guetta Finzi. Until 1952, William Moaning and Son. 1953 to 1971, Dr. Jacob Gerson Cohen. 1971 to 1982, Dr. Herbert R. Axelrod. And from 1982, the current owner. And then potentially from 2023, a new owner. And here are the certificates and documents. Pro forma from Torito for this year, 2023. William Moaning and Son uh, certificate, Philadelphia, 1952. Rembert Wurlitzer certificate from New York, 1951. Pierre Verdudez, Geneva uh, Certificate, 1946. Uh, Caressa and Francais Certificate from Paris, 1921. Sylvester and Mocatel from Paris, 1917. Dendro Report is from Peter Ratcliffe there. And um, we already talked about that. There's some cross matches with some of the other instruments. And you can uh, purchase the full report if you wanted to. Cozy Archive has other documents and things as well, and there's some other references here to look at. So yeah, that is essentially is the Empress Katerina. And also just like to say, do consider uh, subscribing to the Cozy Archive if you're interested in looking at loads of different pictures of instruments and things. It's very interesting. I think it's about $100 or so a year. I have uh, a subscription to it, and I think it's very, very good. As we're stealing the information, I think it's only right that I give them a shout out. So yeah, just uh, a final thing to say, um, let's just have a look at these pictures one final time. Um, this is for sale in Terezio, New York auction in on June the 8th, 2023. Beautiful golden period Strad, uh, something to behold. If anyone's able to look at it in person, I think that'd be pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, here it is. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. So I'll put a link to all of these resources in the uh, video and check it out at your own time. Any comments, any suggestions, anything like that, please let me know. So very exciting stuff and uh, I'll catch you next time. So thanks a lot for watching and bye.